Okay, so now we know what the negator is. So the negator is simply given an f returns whether f rejects its code. So how do we prove that um, ATM is undecidable? So the proof is as follows. You take, let's, let's just call the negator to be n, just for simplicity. What we're going to do is we're going to check what is the result of calling n with these, when you, whenever you see the brackets, that means the code of. So that's the code of n, right? So we're going to run n with the code of n. And we're going to reach a contradiction. That is to say, I, impl I defined the negator n. Now I want to see what if I pass the source code of n itself to n? What will, what is the result of calling n with as parameter the source code of n? So the, the confusing part here is that, you know, it's, it's self referencing, right? We're talking about n and we're using its code as input. So then n needs to talk about n, which is a bit confusing. But we'll see that in the in when you're doing the proof, it's actually not confusing, and it's um, at least for the proof assistant, <laughs> it's it's pretty obvious. So we're we're basically passing negator, and we're passing its code uh, to the negator. So what are we going to do? Well, let's do a case analysis on um, the result whether n the negator accepts its source code. So what could happen? Well, if n accepts the code, then that means, so that means that this whole thing returned accept, which means that n rejected the decider. So let's, let's go through. So if n accepts n, that means that d rejects n pass n. So why is that? Let's see. We say that the negator accepts, okay, right? So we want to know what is the negator of negator, right? So we say, okay, negator, we're doing a case analysis, right? Negator is accept. Okay, so if a negator is accept, that means that um there's a code here it is that means that the machine rejects its code okay so this means this means that the negator rejects negator right why it means that if negator return um true which means B is false, right? If B is false, the only way for this whole thing to return true is if B is false, right? Because here we're negating that. So if B is false, that means that the decider is saying that M rejects W. But what is M? M is the code, is the machine. And what is W? W is the code. So which means what we're saying is if, if the negator accepts the input, then that means that the negator rejects the input. And by definition of D, you get the you get that uh, N rejects the input, which means you get a contradiction. So let's try to see that happening here. So we assume that ATM is decidable. So I actually document the proofs and I try to follow what is in the book. So you can both read the book and also go through, step through the proofs here and you will have a complementary um, material. So we're going to assume that the, the machine, so what we're proving is there is no machine that decides ATM. So we're going to prove that by contradiction, uh, which is doing intros. So now we have the assumption that there is a machine that decides ATM. We're going to destruct that. And now we, what we're going to do, so D is the machine that decides. And the is deck is saying that D decides ATM. Okay. So now next what we do, we have the negator. Um, oops. What is the, the negator? 
this step is just saying that the negator exists. So then ignore the step for a second. What we're doing, we construct the Turing machine. What happens when we run? Okay, so now we get to the point where we want to do a case analysis on here. Does n accept the input n, right? So how do we do this? We represent it in record as it's written here in record, in cock. We say we run the negator n, n is the machine, and we send it as input. This double bracket means the code of n. Okay, so now what we need to do, we need to do a case analysis on the result, right? The result, as we just saw, the result of running a machine is either accept, reject, or loop. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a case analysis on whether or not n accepts n. So n is the machine. We're passing the input, its code. Case analysis. So the first case, what do we know? We know that the machine accepted the input. So if that's the case, then we know we know that if the machine accepts, then um, the decoded machine will reject, right? Which is what we just said. If we kind of clear this up, we get the contradiction, right? Because we assume we do a case analysis and we know that this accepts, but by looking at how it's defined, we can conclude that it also rejects, right? Because this would have to be false. Uh, and for this to be false, then the machine N has to reject the input, but we just assume that it did accept. Okay, so the next case is N rejects the input. So if this rejects, then this whole thing returns uh, false, which means B returns true. So if B returns true, that means that N accepts, right? So we can conclude that N also accepts N, but we assume that it rejected N. So we reach again the contradiction. So the, the last case is if N loops with N. So for this whole thing to loop, um, you would have to have a loop somewhere. So, but here cannot be the loop, right? Uh, does this whole thing loop? It doesn't loop because it's a decider, so you could never loop. So it's a contradiction because there is no way to loop. This code could not loop because D is a decider. It does not loop, and this part doesn't loop, this part doesn't loop. So this case doesn't make sense. That's the third case. And we'll see that uh, this is the case where you have rejection, and the last case is where it loops. Okay, and you should go through this, uh, the various details of the proof, if you want to see it a bit more in detail. Um, right, so in the next video, I'm going to give you a bit of an overview. How do you read the pseudocode? Uh, that actually, I'm going to reserve a whole uh, video just to e help you um, explain how to write this, because that's going to be the subject of your next homework, homework uh, seven. Okay, so...